All right, guys, welcome back. Who knows where this video is going to end up? I got the wings on. Hope you enjoy this film. Thanks for watching. All right, have a look at this. What do you notice? We are unsupported. So the wings are all on and rigged. So I've got zero everywhere, or level, 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 level. Everything's level, apart from the slope top ones are on, obviously, because um, I've picked the fuselage up at the back, the tail wheels off the ground, to level the wing incidents, which is one and a half degrees, doesn't really matter. I lifted it up, so that was zero. Zero, 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 zero. Everything's flat and tensioned up. Real milestone moment. Um, I've got everything tight and right. Um, well, they feel a bit loose actually, but everything's tight and right. And I'm really happy with how it's turned out. I had a good clean up. I got into a frenzy and did all my bracing and wires and you know just cleaned everything up with that just meeting everything up once they're done. Nothing split pins yet because it's got to come apart. Um, we're ready to rock and roll. So next step, uh, I might paint down the carriage. It's already been painted green like the legs and the cross members, the axle are uh, black um, because when the wings come off I'm going to whack down the carriage on and just get it to sit on its wheels. One, it'll be easier to push around and and move around, start on the wings, and I'll make some ribs. Now I've got my cable tensiometer. I don't really care what the tensions are, but I just get them the same. So there, we're about 50, and about 50. Good enough. Done. Um, I checked all my wires, including the cross wires, you know, drag bracing wires. Uh, So now we're basically just sitting on the, the two boards there and rocking and rolling. It all sort of it's nice, nice and solid. So exciting times, let's build on. Back on the undercarriage, so I've painted these already. Now I found a duck shooter's. This paint was like a duck shooter's. Paint, you'd paint a crossbow or a, a duck punt or something like that in that I found. Almost a perfect match for my, I uh, forget the name of the green, the olive drab that I'm using, but I forget the actual name of it. Um, so I'm just going to whack a clear coat on these. The sun's come out, it's a nice day, good opportunity. Whack a clear coat on, give it a few days to dry, because then I can fit the undercarriage. I'm just a bit worried. Um, just that, that chink protection, I guess. It's a satin finish, so I still want it to look dull, uh, but we'll give it a coat and see what happens. What I have learnt, first thing, wash your hands. Get all the grease and rubbish off your hands. And then I'll just, you know, lay them down there, try and limit the scratches, and uh, let's do it. Just hitting them with a, a wax and grease remover. The Windex works well as well. Um, and just get the dust there's like green dust coming off, so it sort of sands it a little bit, I guess, you could say. And it also gets your greasy mitts off it. I've learned a lot with painting lately, especially after the, the cruiser. Cleanliness is the go. And I also do a few test pieces. This one was terrible with the water-based paint. This is the duck shooter paint and duck shooter paint with a clear coat on it so it should be compatible but we'll see what happens just back on the tedious task now of tracing all these brackets out got to fold them all up um, and buff them up and we'll just work away slowly at it all right back on the ribs just treating each one so, like you've got a production line it's hard not to just dump, jump ahead but i'm just gonna Casually just make each rib on its merits. Um, fit them as required. I think I've changed my mind. I'm going to go full ribs everywhere, I think. This half rib idea doesn't give you enough um, 
like for argument's sake, there's a half rib here, but I want a panel around this stuff. So it'd be nice to have the bottom rib for the panel to connect to. I have to buy more stock, I will. But we'll do full ribs. All right, so a lot of repetitive work. I'm not filming much, but got a whole bunch of ribs up on top there. Got about five to go. Um, I put these brackets on and then I just I just make sure that the straight edge clears. See it hits there, which means the covering or the wing leading edge sheeting would hit there. So we zip that off and let's fold some more up. Only six degrees in the hanger. If I'm shaking, that's why everything's cold. Let's take these guys on here. Makes it easier with my primitive little folder. Clamp the job. It's clamped, got the right orientation with a radius up to 90. Boom. And I got three nice um, brackets for the ribs. So touch them there, take a bit off. Edge distance on these holes sort of goes out the window. Always right on the limit. That's clear, but I'll just give that a neaten up there. The rear one goes in the bracket. We drill through. I just go straight to one eighth. I also use my I use my little ten mil piece. This is a good one. Ten mil there. That just ensures, I know now, with my rivet gun, I can actually get the um, the rivet gun, 10 mils is about the closest you can get the rivet gun in. If you go too close to the radius, you can't get the, the rivet gun in. All right, nice sharp drill bits to go. I'm just sort of getting a bit more savvy now, going straight through, Clico, done. On my, uh, got my third drill bit. For all those ribs, but a nice sharp one makes a difference. And keep on top of the swarf with the vacuum. Keep it clean. So one more, one more right hand rib and a left hand rib. Finish off all the constant cord ribs and looking pretty good. If you look down there, at a rough, they're all just sitting on top of the spar. Obviously, I have to jig these up um, and then rivet them. But with them all down on the spar, I've got a really nice straight trailing edge going well. Right, time just to neaten up my rib spacing. So I've got 100 and 104 and a quarter inches is the spar. I've got seven gaps, eight ribs. I've worked out that the ribs, well the ribs are half inch. So to take four inches off for the actual thickness of the ribs gives me a hundred inches and a hundred and a quarter inches or two five four five millimeters. Divide that by the seven gaps gives me 363 and a half or 14.32 inches. I'm not too technical, but I'll make up a, a board or something and just neaten up my rib spacing. Right, another quick jig, L angle, 2B1. The plan is the jig sits on the spar, that is square, so it squares the rib up, pull it across and those verticals hold the rib vertical. So it's vertical and it's square to the front spar. Let's drill them. Alright, I'm actually struggling a bit here, just trying to get everything square and 
why it's on the wing. I think these are in a little bit tight. They might have bowed a little bit. Um, I think I've got two or three done. I started out here, then I realised it's easier. I haven't got the root one done, but I used use this one. The red's the no rivet zone. I've got to work out what I've got to do there because I've got to be able to get the wing off. But then just measure, rather than trying to square this way, just measure the same distance and I'll, I'll work my way out. But I know in the past if you do that, you know, if you're eighth of an inch out, by the time you get to the tip times eight, you're an inch out. Um, so I've just got my bit of wood and I'll just work out from there and then take that over to the trailing edge. So the next one. So it's just very hard to, and nothing's riveted, but they sort of still, you can see the, the rib can actually do that. So anyway, um, we'll persevere. That'll have leading edge sheet eventually, which will hold everything nice. So we'll keep going, but I don't want to wreck my, my good work so far. Just got to work on the technique. All right, guys, quick wrap up. I'm trying to get a video out each week if I don't get much done. Well, I'll just tell you I didn't get much done, I guess. So, quarter to three, have been going since nine o'clock. Haven't stopped. Um, got some ribs on. So we got the ribs, got the ribs fixed. You can see we're riveted here. Two rivets, two, two, so two, four, six rivets in each one um, on this top right hand wing. Um, trailing edge is still looking good. Obviously the other side's down lower. These are all raised up off the spar. I've got a few little ribs. Um, this position here, I'm not sure if I covered that. I can't rivet there because you want the wing to slide off. So the male's on the left female on the right for two inches. So this rib will go on the center wing. I need another root rib here. It's gonna be square to this one. And I'm gonna work out how I'm actually gonna attach that. Uh, tomorrow, hopefully, I'll do the same on the top left hand wing. So I learned a lot there, I guess, mucking around with jigs. Probably spent too much time today. Um, yeah, I showed you this fella, made this guy up, which sits on, goes on, grabs the leading edge, gives me a vertical, and goes against the rib. Well, that's okay, but because um, the way these ribs are, everything twists and it's got a mind of its own, um, you can still see. So this is basically finished apart from leading edge sheeting which will add a bit of strength but I can actually you know I can push that out of the way um, away from vertical so I think I wasted a lot of time so another wing basically I can use this as a reference as a vertical if you like and hold the rib and drill it um, and to square them up I basically got it's 15 inches Center to center, it's a 14 and a half, I think it is. I got a bit of balsa wood um, and put it between each rib. So I started at zero and worked my way out. Just got to be cautious because you know that little, like I said before, little increments can equal an inch out of the tip. But I found that the easiest way 15 inches or whatever I decided. Dunk, 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 dunk. When you get to certain areas, like here, I think the rib fell in amongst all this, um, so just move it. I might have 16 and 14 inches, as long as it's the same on the other side, not a problem. And the reason I'm, that's, well that's half the reason I'm doing this opposite to what I said I was going to do on the bench. Uh, another reason you can see on the bench, I may not have picked up that I need to get this bolt out. So I've scalloped this guy, scalloped this guy out. Um, I can't put the bolt in the other way because there's traffic on the other side as well. You have the um, the uh, drag brace in the wing, so it only just has to sort of go in that way. So anyway, that's where we're at at the moment. 
um, centre section. This one here is going to get pretty busy with the turnbuckle. This turnbuckle does actually, the clevis pin touches the spar, which I'm not too happy about. Um, that's probably come about because I'm probably too higher than I'm meant to be, than optimal. Probably meant to be down a bit, which would lower that angle down. Um, but I might have to put a dog leg in just to keep that clevis pin off from touching the spar. Um, I'm going to put my cheetah bolt through there. Three, it'll be three mil as opposed to four mil out here. Three mil, I might paint it red so I know which one. So if I undo this one, I'm going to be in all sorts of trouble. Um, it shouldn't actually undo, it should just spin. It's got a nut on the back of it, which is buried in the compression strut. But this one, um, I have an access hole just to put a nut. It's more, more a pin, just a, just a confidence pin to stop the wings separating. And we'll get all those on. So there you go, guys. Um, hope you enjoy watching, building along with me. A lot of monotonous work, because guess what? Once we finish the top wing, you got it. We've got to do all the bottom wing. So I'm trying to make it interesting for you, but um, you're obviously watching this. You enjoy building, well, watching people build planes. So this is part of building planes, just the monotony of doing all those ribs. Um, once the ribs are on, trailing edge, leaning edge sheet. Uh, I've got no idea how the ailerons are going to turn out, to be honest, or how the, the hinge all works. But come this far and we'll work it out. Thanks for watching.